Council for the Blind Zimbabwe has been a leading provider of eye services in Zimbabwe since 1955. We are a national organization whose aim and mission is the prevention and restoration of blindness, educating and rehabilitating the blind and visually impaired, and their production and supply of low-cost spectaculars. Retinoblastoma is an aggressive eye cancer of infants and childhood, but it remains a rare disease in Africa. Studies reveal that in Zimbabwe, the incidence of retinoblastoma is estimated at 23.3 per million, ranking third highest in the world after Uganda and Mali. This project was designed to strengthen the provision of child eye health services at Sekuru Kagui and Richard Morris Tertiary Eye Units in Zimbabwe. The program focused on offering comprehensive retinoblastoma services to pediatric patients at the two eye units. I bring to you the story of our two retinoblastoma champions from our rural communities. Andrew Duwe, a three-year-old from Gwanda, and Malvin Zunzu, a four-year-old from Inyati. From diagnosis to treatment and management of the condition. Welcome to Gwanda at Duwe's homestead. My name is Andrew Duwe. I am a retinoblastoma champion. Eh, <laughs> Wabo nani kwa kali sanjaya? Jengwa bubaba ichilo, mina imi umamaka endro. <coughs> o endro upateke ni wake, upalise, last, upalise minuku mbona last year mu akast. E le, ili tola kelinga nilipanye gile, gile klias mu akast. Nga mtata nga mse kliniki ya giti kona peste ni mua. E kliniki nge, lavo, ngokuku nanzele anje, sasuku tata lula bani nikichupuli, ane kupuchuze la beti, Enganye kuphandwa into engaphela into leyana yaya lokhu ikhula kuthe ngo December ihlolela laqala ukuvuvuka ngo January mhlaka 6 ngamthwala ngaya la egwanda e hospital igwanda yavuka bamkhangela bona bayintshela ukuthi lihlolela ngani lihlatshiwe so bani ki parasite le amoxicillin basi sithi ungabona kungatshinji ngcono umuse Richard Morris yiku kumthwala kwami sengimusa e Richard Morris Oh, and Rukum Kalisa Ego two years a month. Oka Katasu three years. Yena now Kang a little Soleli, Wanga two years Bushum, Wabalali Kulas and Chinchali Kalamakalas, Koto in a white Aguko Bushum, Ubushum, Buzeva Kalisa Zugu February twenty twenty one and Connessus Tisses Bushum. From last year, why is it Aliko Bushum, Lugum Kang, why is Dalila is Kitimilis Aliko Bushum? Not in Bonagunga Sachin Janga Lutu and Gonova Mekwanda. Akata is spelled in the Zokukata, Akata, a piece, Mota, and I figure is spelled in Richard Morris. Elfian one bang and Mugela civil in Abonu to go tailor. Table figure and some Bonu to go tailor, to go tailor was a figure set to whom to an Alosefanama test the Amaning. I have a Fanela test to Kosovo Fanele Azuzi is scan and Geniso Guscan. So I'm Palilu to Sofan and Yeguscani, Masang Tola only to the Council of Blind. Wanga tisa kakulu, iba benza ugutumtu wana azangi ni kuskani. Abonaka luguti ikenza, mbuto kutela wa esafika wati ikenza, ii ikenza li eseli shweni. Kwa soko faneli bonaka luguti isi hambo unga nani uguzi eneli sege ugu tritu. Wanga tisa kakulu wa Council of Blind, iba wanga tisa kakulu wa azafiki katesa kushacho na machi kisani wana lagiwa. Njengwa wa ewe te kutela wa esafika wati luguti ikenza. So tina sasa ni nelisi, ugute sana zpata lela, yiko sa atola abe council of blind, ugute basi ni tisi, futi le speli la sasa ngala o ama ama iska iska ni sasa ngala shola kwa soko fanya le sipu mesi 
Buzgani is Pandi, is Durai. You call Owens, I cancel of blind bang notice, or would you be an ellis with bang patalili, Umtuana and notice. Singing in a legoscan, Qua Utogotella, or Bonamar Zaltescan, or Sisters of Fanning, eh, M. Pilo, La Paisa Fanella Chacona, Aman Jackson, our chemo. Aman Jackson Lana, I say notice with a voice, silly to Lena, Elizabeth Pumere Pandi, Libuia, Lipagat. Uguze binele suguti bali operate bali keep. Nye mfa kwe guba ntetiskani ngatata two weeks enga gai pali sugu shlaba manje kishin. Kwa hama nge vige stri la pesa tola kona usizo la manje kishin. Uguta shlaju a manje kishin. Ni festi tozi yake aishabe mshaka 18 no 19 februar. Mine spelte na hange ne mshaka 27 januar. Nga puma mshaka 20 februar. And the one is on Kazazi Funaga, like Uham, and we are especially Lugu Penduga, Lugu, Lesasa, E. Council of Blind, yes, notice us, the Siaguscani transport is as tall as you of us can be saved as Pendu says, Yakman Jackson, you were Agatavis Tola Futi was a hamis of a pin, the Vasbis, the Richard Morris. Tina, who won over Tunta and Saint Jalo, just men, the so is so sort. Oh, God, I was a truth. Over intercessing as I can see, born, you sing as I can see. Kuto pati nyemvo uba na mko sika zisi kambile Richard Morris. Sipefie ba mchelo kukuti tui ikeensa. Futi njalo yintuwe kone kalisele vantua ni mubangati ye nchele siti kona kwa kalisele ku, ku zero month to five years. So ilati sawa mchelo kuti kuchense uti yintuwe kone. Lugufika njespeze lugubona vanya vantua na avala kukona luku. Kuya wenza. Uwam yele kono kumita no siri koko no kutai. Chenseti nje into yeko na raisi kuti kungaba into yeko nzi. Yeko tine sa wam gila mako. Nyeo we mu li family enza lo lai. Into kwa betu so kunyo kuma li samza na sebe bonu mtu anili so se linjaro. Mbe ukali se ni ngabane ngabasale kubula wa kuto wakati sebe bebe zembona beko na ngai. Into ya betu sai kuta nje tina yite sa sa skonzi kuti so kutai. Luku ituwa into yeve le kono. Wawamgela, Labo Makula, and eat by Manga, I knew my side. Mova Conapes Cavin, Cauzang, a suburban Cotanja Manalo. Cotta, see a Wamugil and Woody, nice belly, a whole cloon woody, interval corn. Labo Mass Vachela, Wawamgela Gunjala, and Zayan Bono would take him by my abandon, seven at the bar, Miss Saba, and Mamgela, and your tea, cut it with Lala and you, as a sunk his cut. Never wish that your Aman Jixenda or Kimo end. As I'm sure Pogum Kulisa will look right, or go to a change school night and will be sure to let a village says Limans, Lip Melepanji, Sedit Swavili, Sedit and Sukuo Malibuela Pagat. Cates is as Kangal looking in Bisela Lajo is second dose. Uza will look at Kubega, a Lajo, Kubega, Locate Lajo, Guza Gay Figure, Wooty, Uto Gotella, Achu, which is the operator and Kangal, Wooty, Council of Blind, is a looking notice and a transport. You get a Lajo, we are Lajo, Lajo and Pilo. Welcome to Inyat, Zuzu's homestead. Mina yung Omega Moyo, Nsala Enyati, Etromalage, Village 10, Nsala Lomalvin, Lomtano Eta, Lobaba, Kiwa Kibizola, Kemuvege Zela, Zuzu, Sipilango, Ulima, Lobaba, Yan Sevenza, Eko Vengam Tolanga. So, Man, feeling at hospital, but I will under my hands and a fuzzing here, Richard Morris, who must specialist doctors Amish. Mahamba, a Richard Morris in Flagat twenty two December. My figure, Vangela, but William Vuz and Ellie Shrain. After that, two doctor at Okona, Nibue, Bampa, Lady Day, two to Nibia, and January. A sugar, a buoyang up, then same sugar, Richard Morris. Mazo Salang up, and a swelling man, as an Abelam, and February. Nga hama msaga 
Richard Morris Richard Morris I'm a Watama results are up, Pums, a shal and just a malanga, Puma results, it is old doctor, so on a lavand so for the Lena, MP, Le Locuzeli chemotherapy. Tessem Puila Pekaya, Nashala, Pose, three days, Bafona, MP, Watama Jeshanga Mavin Sebu, Bafana Long Mamma, Watama Jeshanga Mavin Sebu, Nashaka, there and they, Peketa, who are Nangalan and sit down. A hamba, Slava, twenty three, who fuse. Richard Morris Lamming your foom, get what in yes, I am to an alleged treatment. In ten figure, what in a taller gulum than oil and oil cancer lay. So, nothing him can yell and nothing eating kind of lemma sighting a one lama chats out con with into late color, so it is so easy a figure. Illicious silly, silly, boogie. So, I'm not lingering a slag, I guess, and one. Ms. <laughs> So, I'm going to have a counseling of the blind. I'm going to have a disclaimer. I'm going to have a Malvin and Mascans. I'm going to have a UPH. I'm going to have a lot of Mascans. 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 I'm Malvin and Kumanga. I'm going to have a lot of Nakalang, you won a little like a little white ever so. My etia talas are witty by one who get little so. Wagunga so white, white, I all white lane fuba and e gold, and any brown which has a corner of Paga ten to an emia male. So ever womb shava ekim was the sea shava ekim away. Was so a local whip lake was so willing to shall as the hamba white so, so we live and live normal. Now, and as a yet say, right, but to Sasale owing to win one of the chatter pagati. I was a light in general color, so can and so right, I was a white, so right. So, in your first witting, pooch and cobege as a great deal, it treatment that came. Over our mess, Belle, Lamina, Lomgam, was on a Sazuanan, cause Amat doctors, I see cancer. 
ilihlo futhi eliqala elithithwe xa kusehlila njani selikhitshwa xa nje luba bakhe ngefoni ngimfoni lelo baba ke akula lihle lomdana ke lingakhitshwa likhitshwa njani ikhensa ngikhona ngathi akula ngenye indlela abanga elapha ngakhona ekhuluma esithi xa kuyikhensa umdana ke kaphume but loba yena wayethinga nza ngimlalele kakhulu ukuthi ngilalelena wathi kokhona ngabe ngimtshela nsithi hayi into le idangerous ngilalela wona uthi ngibuye khona ngapha ekhaya uzanjani sizamezwa nomntwana ngxa sokusira siyabela sesithi nesibedi lakho sisabe babe sijelile vele elo khesale njale ngazusisi sibili kwazo kwahlala sila madesi ngasafo la misikhane sithi ah doctor mna umkami lapha kasafo na sisazwanani kahle so ngicela ukuphuma ngekhuluma laye udoctor hayi ora njalo sengasazwanani uso ngaphuma ekhuluma laye ngacela kuna andrew ukushuthu umntwana ke elo malvin ukuthi mfike njengesibaba ke isithombe sika andrew ukuthi la bona ukuthi singarelaxa ngo Malvin u Malvin uzaba nje ngo Andrew ngafi ngasa discharge wase abuya lapha ekhaya ngamtshe ngihla wahle wethuka wathayi ansanjani akusela into engayitsho khale sengindikeza abe sibedlele umntana ami konke abaza kwenza sengukhale ukuthi umntana njani abe right wayiki sikade tshele isihlobo zakho anto mama ke laba bengazuzithwa ilihle lakhitshwa labo base samavini sabajengise sibasendela ku WhatsApp isithombe sika Andrew ngoba mama ke wayivumula ithe ngala problem isikhathi besithayi siyavuma Malvin kanjani kakhitshisa ilihle xa ukuthi into angikhona injalo ngiyabonga abe counseling of the blind abangenzela fast umdana amazwe waphangisa ukuthola i-treatment into eselihlweni lakhe ayisakhane kakhulu ngendlela mina ngase ngibone ngakhona kwabaye abantwana sengikhali ukuthi la umavini kuza kuba njani so umbonga abe counseling of the blind abaye babancedisile umavini wathola amasinyane i-treatment yakhe bona abe council our council of the blind abasincedisileyo kakhulu ekubhadaleleni umalvin amaskanzo nalawo ayenza wazo waqeda bebe sithatha ubh behamba lathi basisa empilo ukuthi umntwana ayehlaba ikhemotherapy uhlabile last month laka 22 february ngibahlaka 23 wathi blood mhlaka 22 u24 wahlaba ee amanje kishini sabeli kimo terali so kufuze ngibu yele mshaka 22 faji survival and chances of saving vision depends on severity of disease at presentation our heroes had to undergo chemo therapy at mpilo central hospital in blawaya upon finishing their six cycles of chemo therapy treatment they had to undergo surgery of the infected eye at richard morris eye unit the surgery was a success To follow up on the children's condition, the boys were given review death. This is what the mothers had to say after the surgery. Mama na Marvin, Marvin ubuye lo enza i operation to next bed. Eh eh eh, i operation na ke wathi bemvula ibandage and second day why vuvuke. Ta kufuna isibili wazo kwayethusa lo doctor wathi ngakumntana ivuvuke kanga. Ampare limiti yakhe hayi bamthondisela bamdressa kuhle walokho kuwohla kancane kancane saza cina sidischarge ekudischarge ngithi hayi umntana sangahluphi labo hla kuhle ngihlo baba right so sela khona apha ngaze mbone problem sibile namhlanje ukureview yethu lapha umntana kana problem kakhulana kanjani woke ubilihle ngokuvuvuka wala waye ngakhadi why is no mari we just dali la padiki ni mbuni patenge sisi tige zovuko so ngangu tawe la konga ngangu tinge ni lamne ngase mbone la kundi ni tu gani tete ili chele mta nusu na lenga lena patika zama kali watu la sisi ni wazoga wusa eloke njalo so ni abonga la kuu usi zola watu wote wote kama tere wote mta na even katika sisi ya zala la wanya wanda na agora pro entra a lá chegou mas aí mano o na entro o entro o se operativo nem vai poder pegar a mas se sair de lá que se tem o operativo tudo está aí agora aí operativo anda nem vou nem fui o o bloco de entro entro é da lá 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 chegou de operativo ninguém a mexer com isso não me chamem nem disse de lá pessoas a vir viu e aí Never got operation. Kadesa ni zizwa ni lugu tava ni simu endo asagi soso na ngang kamila lele sana engan kadesa ni mbone soso. Kadesa ni zizwa ni lugu tava. Langen kila nje ni mugelega ngayo ni lapes pejira ni lugu tava ni ambo ni lugu tinja ulugu sila.
We as Council for the Blind, together with the Ministry of Health and Child Welfare, believe that early diagnosis and treatment is key towards fighting retinoblastoma in Zimbabwe. Andrew and Malvin's cases have been a true testimony and reflection to the fight towards retinoblastoma. I'm Dr. Macheka. I am the head of the Google Eye Hospital. Uh, in addition to that, I am the head of eye care services in the country as the chief government of pharmacologists. Uh, I would want to talk just briefly about this childhood cancer called uh, retinoblastoma. This is a cancer of childhood, it's a, it, which arises from the primitive cells of the retina. Uh, and the, in terms of prevalence, it ranges from 15,000 per life birth to almost 20,000 per life birth. Uh, and this uh, cancer uh, has been uh, a problem for us as a country and, uh, in the sense that you know, we have been getting a lot of very advanced uh, cancers presenting either at Sekuga Gulai Hospital or at uh, United Ploa uh, Group of Hospital at UBH. Uh, so this, this cancer, uh, if diagnosed early, can actually be amenable to uh, good treatment. And the motto usually for addressing retinoblastoma is you want to save life, that's the first thing. The next is to save the eyeball. Uh, the next is to save vision in that mode. So any diagnosis will make, or any presentation will make uh, it possible for us to be able to uh, offer these children uh, better treatment and better outcomes from those treatments. And these treatments are, are they vary from, you know, uh, you can, for those who present early, they can have access to laser therapy, they can, some of them can have to have uh, intravitreal chemotherapy, intra-arterial chemotherapy, uh, and the cryotherapy, all these uh, therapies are, are available. We have seen them at, at sites and places where we are visiting. And uh, now we really have to subject children uh, to uh, some of those disfiguring eye operations. Or even the new creations are only uh, preserved for those where you can't wait a child is uh, bilateral retinoblastomas and you want to have a histological diagnosis from that. So that's how far we have come with retinoblastoma. But to go back to what I said about having early diagnosis and uh, referral and treatment, we have been carrying out campaigns uh, where we have been trying to say, let's increase awareness about this condition, retinoblastoma. Uh, so that, you know, I uh, think we have got increased throughput uh, from the clinics, the clinic nurses, uh, who are not of family trained, but we have been exposed to uh, training or awareness on retinoblastoma diagnosis. Mm -hmm. If they can refer this and uh, send them early, uh, to the earliest suspicion, then these children will be able to benefit from the treatments that are available. So I think this is actually where we are uh, with this, and we want to continue to roll out uh, these trainings to primary care nurses, uh, to midwives, uh, so that they are able to uh, assist in diagnosis and re a referral of these children my name is Dr. Malemani. I am a specialist ophthalmologist with a keen interest in pediatric ophthalmology and uh, motility disorders. I am currently working at uh, United Blauer Hospitals 
uh, at the Children's Eye Hospital, uh, which is situated at Richard Morris. Um, now, as, as a pediatric ophthalmologist, we see a significant number of uh, cases of retinoblastoma. Um, briefly on retinoblastoma, it's, it's uh, the commonest intraocular tumor of childhood. Uh, I think uh, going by statistics, it's a, it accounts for about three three percent of all childhood tumors. So it's a fairly a common tumor in that sense. Zimbabwe uh, ranks uh, is the is is the th Zimbabwe has the third highest uh, incidence of retinoblastoma in the world. Uh, and the sad thing is. Uh, most of our clients do present uh, late. So in terms of presentation, um, if, if you note when you take a picture with a camera, you get a, a red reflex. So children with retinoblastoma will present with a white reflex instead of a red reflex. So once you see that, that should uh, um, point you towards, uh, or that should uh, make you go and seek a, a, a uh, attention at, at, at an institution. So like I mentioned, most of our patients will present with a proptosis, which is an eye that is uh, protruding outward. And uh, usually, in in most cases, that generally tends to be a late presentation. The few studies that have been done, although most are anecdotal, have shown that the mortality uh, due to retinoblastoma is uh, relatively high with up to two-thirds of the uh, patients uh, passing away um, in, in, in over a 10-year period, which is quite sad. Although literature will say up to 95% uh, in the West uh, do survive uh, at five years. Now, in terms of presentation, like I said, uh, that white eye reflex when you take a picture uh, called the local chorea is uh, the commonest uh, presentation. Some children will present with a squint. Uh, they'll present with uh, blood in the eye. Um, a, a swollen or, or protruding eye, uh, called a protosis. That's another presentation. So if you do see any of this, uh, you, in your child, you have to seek uh, attention as soon as possible. For the year 2021, we have attended to four, four, four children who presented with uh, retinoblastoma, uh, namely uh, Malvin, uh, Andrew, uh, Ketani, and Given. The first two children, Malvin and, uh, and Andrew, have uh, received six cycles of chemotherapy. Uh, their histology reports and went on to have uh, enucleations, which is the removal of the eyeball. Uh, and uh, the good news is the reports say that uh, the cancer was restricted. The cancer was restricted to the eyeball. Um, the other two children, Ketani and uh, Given, are yet to complete their chemo cycles. Uh, we'll be seeing them uh, during the course of time. Um, so we will uh, attend to them as they come in. Now, now uh, a diagnosis of retinoblastoma doesn't necessarily mean a death sentence. Um, the cancer is uh, treatable. Uh, in the West, in the base of centers, up to 95% of uh, children survive. So the treatment options uh, available, uh, they can use laser to burn off the, the blood supply to the uh, uh, cancer. Uh, other options will include uh, chemotherapy, which could be in, intravitreal or intraterial. A radiotherapy can also be used uh, to treat a retinoblastoma. In our center, a, our treatment is mainly a chemotherapy. So, a, in a few of the cases, uh, patients will a, go on to have radiotherapy. Depending on, on the outcome, a, one may uh, go on to a, have a surgery. Uh, surgery of choice is an enucleation where we remove the cancerous eye and uh, we, we, we may then uh, 
and uh, adjunctive uh, chemotherapy uh, in that setting. Chemotherapy means uh, medicines that are used to fight uh, the cancer. Just like how when people have an infection, they are given uh, antibacterials. So it's the same thing. Chemotherapy means anti-cancer drugs that uh, help fight that uh, cancer. Over the years, the challenges that we've faced, um, mainly the biggest challenge that we face is the late or delayed presentation, uh, which could be uh, due to the uh, patients or parents seeking a, a, a treatment late, either due to ignorance or lack of access to institutions. And the second uh, challenge, uh, still on, on the late uh, or delayed uh, presentation, is you find that most centers are not, you have people that are not aware of the disease. So the, the patient presents at the, at the clinic, but they are turned away or given some uh, telecycling eye ointment, and then they go back and then eventually when the eye pops out, that's when the, 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 the clinic then presents them to the next uh, 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 um, uh, 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 point. So. Also, because access is limited, um, COVID has uh, dealt a hard blow on the management. We trans transport from uh, the peripheral uh, centers to the uh, central hospitals has been a challenge. So patients will also uh, use that as a, a possible excuse for late presentation. The economy hasn't been so great. Most people can't afford to come to the hospitals um, to seek services. So that also hinders uh, uh, on presentation. The next challenge is uh, the delay in uh, um, uh, getting the service. So you've got someone who's been diagnosed with retinoblastoma. There are preliminary uh, assays or tests that we need to do. Uh, uh, be they radio, radio uh, logic test, be they uh, blood test, so those come at a cost. So you find that uh, some people will uh, tell you that we don't have money to access those services. So that also uh, 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 makes it harder to uh, manage the, the, the clients. The, the other big challenge that we face is acceptance of uh, the treatment options from the parents. Uh, so you, you make a diagnosis, you tell the parent that uh, you've got, uh, your child is a retinoblastoma. Uh, for them to accept, it takes a lot of time. Um, and then when you mention that, you may need to uh, remove that eyeball, it even makes things worse. So, uh, parents' acceptance is, 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 is another very big challenge uh, um, when it comes to, to the treatment. We, we are grateful to the partners who have uh, chipped in to assist, and we are very grateful for that. Uh, however, uh, the hope is uh, we continue to get support. Uh, uh, and the support doesn't come to an end. The economy has been performing well and most people will continue to struggle with uh, accessing services and uh, there may be a need to extend uh, that support. On the issue of acceptance, the hope is we, we have uh, a functioning um, support service, be it a counsellor, uh, who will counsel these uh, parents uh, regarding their condition. Uh, also, to uh, uh, get a, 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 a strong support group uh, that has uh, 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 survivors or retinoblastoma champions who can help uh, other parents through their uh, journey, explaining the condition. Because as medical personnel, we can make a diagnosis, we can uh, uh, prescribe a treatment, but we really do not know how the journey uh, through the treatment uh, is like. But if you have someone who has gone that same journey uh, uh, leading you or offering to assist you through that journey, it makes uh, the journey some, somewhat easier or somewhat bearable. Uh, 
Um, like I mentioned, we still face, we still have a challenge with uh, uh, parents. Uh, once you mention that you want to enucleate the eye, um, the the reaction changes. So they want to take their child out. The, but I'm hoping that as we have more and more survivors, uh, and they are able to talk to those parents, uh, the acceptance may uh, go high. There may also be a need to do the pressure courses uh, for the staff or personnel at the peripheral centers to teach them more retinoblastoma. And also there's a need for, to raise the community awareness on the condition so that uh, 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 patients may actually uh, present early and their uh, survival from the uh, cancer uh, is improved. Okay. My name is uh, Tony Soalson Kennedy Bebe. I'm the counselor here at Richard uh, Morris Hospital. In the retinoblastoma pro program, I do the counseling sessions to the mothers and eventually to the fathers as well. As I've said that I'm the counselor at Richard Morris here in Mulawai. Uh, after realizing that they were giving in too much attention to the children and the mothers, giving them medical attention, uh, which was with the physical side of the needs of a person according to Maslow, who were attending to these children in the cosmetic kind of a, 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 a scene when we were taking them for chemotherapy and all the other programs that they were being attended to. Thereby we, we saw a need for the children and the mothers to be given psychotherapy. That's when the counselor had to come in. After the counseling sessions, we did the counseling sessions we realized that there were a lot of myths and misconceptions that needed to be cleared. Because these mothers, they had a lot of, me, uh, of, of fear, they were a lot of anxiety as to what will happen to my child after attending chemotherapy. We are coming from Zimbabwe. Africans, as Africans, we are people that are notoriously religious. We believe in a lot of things. If it's not God, then it has got to be our ancestors, our amatrosate, our, 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 so that they come in and aid us. So now people, as people, we decide which one would want to follow. Is it the medical world, the African world? So that's when we have to come in and start sit down with the parents, with the mothers and the children and sort it out with them through counseling sessions, clearing the myths and misconceptions, I attending to their fears, and giving them answers and giving them the strength. You see, the counseling sessions is all about giving people a way to cope up with the situation that they are in. So we try to come in and we've seen it uh, giving us a lot of positives that are coming from there. Though we still have some gaps, these gaps that we decide we have seen a need for a vigorous counseling sessions that will not only attend to the mothers. Mind you, these children, young as they are, the big, the eldest is about eight. So they still, they still have needs. They have got their own needs. Mind you, they, 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 we are not islands. We. We, we live in societies, not only a society, but we come from families, and families we've got different setups. And thus, leading us to have counseling sessions, not only counseling sessions, vigorous counseling sessions that will include that will start with the child, the mother, the father, as well as the parents. Because in Africa, in an African setup, it's not the, a child is not a mother and fathers. The child is the families. It's not a families, but it's even for the whole entire community. So we need to attend to all of this so that this program would uh, give us a lot of gains. Not only for these only children. We believe that retinoplastoma is still there. It, 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 it's, it's, this is not the last time we're going to be seeing cases of retinoplastoma. We want to empower these mothers, the children, the fathers, 
uh, like the parents as well, the parents, they, that, the, I mean, if I'm talking about parents, the same I'm meaning the grandparents and the, the grandmothers. We want these people to be our pioneers, to be the, our role models, to be our pathfinders, so that in the communities where they are coming from, they can even be doing the primary education of uh, the uh, retinoplastoma, such that if they identify anybody that is something like that, they won't send it to African traditional medicine, but they will send it to the medical world. As I mentioned earlier, we are in Africa, we are in Zimbabwe, where there is a conflict of interest. On one side, there is the medical world. On the other side, there is African mentality, the Africanism, whereby people believe in witchcraft. People believe that their child has been bewitched. And if somebody gets to that stance without being counseled, the person really misses their review dates. And them missing their review dates means there is disease progression. Retinoplastoma progression, it will be still be progressing such that when the child comes, it, 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 a lot of damage would have been done. It, thereby leading to, uh, at the end of the day, it will look, it will come out as if the Western world or the medical world failed the child. But when in actual fact it was the, the African beliefs that we are having of bewitching, of bewitchment, such that people take time. Instead of coming to the hospital, people will be moving around, going for this traditional healer. He fails, he goes to the other, leaves the traditional healer. Like I've mentioned that Africans were notoriously religious. If the traditional area is fake, then it means I have to go to a, a, a pastor. We've got a lot of uh, pastors, if I would want to mention that, have done a lot of miracles, miracles. So children will be taken there, and thereby, instead of helping or aiding the child, the child ends up, instead of maybe having one problem, one eye having a problem, the child completely goes blind. We are trying to get people to understand that this retinoplastoma does not come from being bewitched, but it comes because cancer cells would have been produced, uh, grown in somebody's body, but there is something that can be done once it is attended to earlier rather than later. Instead of producing a blind people, we are producing a healthy and well-seeing people. My name is Juliet Maura. I'm the sister in charge of Sekuruka Gui Hospital in Harare Parvenya Hospital. I'm the sister in charge of the um, pediatric unit, and that's where the retinoplastoma unit is. This is a pediatric unit. Um, we treat patients all, from all around Zimbabwe. It's a teacher center, so we have referrals from all around, from clinics, from district hospitals, from provincial hospitals, they all come here. Before 2019, we never had a um, retinoblastoma unit here at Sekulka So in 2019, August, I was privileged that I was chosen to go and represent the country to the UK, that is the Royal London Hospital, they have an retinoblastoma center there, so I was attached there with two other doctors and another nurse to learn more about retinoblastoma. We have achieved quite a lot, because right now, incorporating the knowledge that we have in low vision, we can now see the children and record their visual activities. Uh, quite efficiently, we see the patients, and they now they, there is now a, a support network from Council for the Blind. Most patients don't have money to come to the hospital, but we thank God for CBM and Council for the Blind. We now have a fund to give to the clients when they come in for reviews and when they come in for chemotherapy or they come for surgery. And we also have a fund that is supporting these children for CT scans and other observations and other investigations that needs to be done. So we thank God that is happening 
and we are moving forward quickly and effectively. And treatment is now happening e- effectively. The other thing that we have achieved is we can now follow up our clients through tele teleclinics, we can phone the patient and ask. And recently, we have started following them even to their homes to see how the client is doing and how the medications are and if they are okay and follow whatever treatment they have been given. In Zimbabwe, the challenges that we face is that of late presentation. A lot of patients come very late when uh, the retinoblastoma or the tumor is now fungating and we can no longer save the eye. This is maybe because there is poor uh, knowledge within our people, sensitization about retinoblastoma. And the other thing is of um, our traditional and cultural beliefs. Uh, you will see that a person can come early and they are diagnosed, but the moment that they are told it's a cancer, they will go back and never come back. They will come back very, very late when we can no longer do anything just but remove the eye. I think that's the greatest challenge that we have. Um, sensitization will go a long way to tell the people what is the of blastoma and how early presentation will help to save, to save the child's eye. Good day. I'm Ara Jane up here in Florence Manso. I work at Richard Morris Petrol Female Eyes. I'm the Retino Blastoma Focal Person. I want to know what Retino Blastoma says. I want to know what I'm saying. 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 But <laughs> Loco, we are not this good to go to the way that you operate in the end of the machine. Lamps and the good Jawula or Kulu, Mobani Lavantana, our operator two weeks back, our very good review. We want a whole cave right to be held in the bad tower by Jawula. Go on, you will come back with me. My name is Mentinati, I'm the coordinator for the retinoplastoma program here at Richard Morris. Most of children who are diagnosed with retinoplastoma, they come from vulnerable families. As a coordinator at Richard Morris, I make sure with the help of the nurses, we identify those children. We make sure that they get a proper treatment, investigations are done, and the parents, they come for follow-up visits, medication is provided. And then even we go to the extent that they get a proper counseling sessions, provide them with the transport to and from their homes, and even children that they are well taken care of. We also make sure that children are pro- children is welfare it's provided since we know that children they need special foods, groceries, welfare like pampers, bar soaps, colgate and etc and we provide them with transport to and from their homes. We make sure that entertainment is provided. Some of the times we take them out. Lockdown has been one of the greatest challenges in terms of coordination between the hospital and the patients. Our patients, they come from remote areas, so there is a problem with transport and they end up missing their review dates. Since these children, they come from rural areas, and intercity traveling has been banned. So it's been, it's been difficult for us to coordinate between the, the patients and even us to go and do home visits. So this one has been one of their blow in terms of review and following up. I'm Sister Faith Mugwane Muchando, ophthalmic trained 
currently working in Padania for a group of hospitals under the group Kagumi I unit. Currently, I'm working in main operating theater under ICE, where we operate all age groups with various eye conditions. The challenges that we are facing, some of them, the patients, they report late when the disease is already advanced. Maybe it's because in the district hospitals or in the clinics, there is shortage of ophthalmic personnel that educate patients or guardians or caregivers about the condition. So by the time they report to the central hospitals, it will be late and the disease will be progressed. The other challenge is that when the patients come at central hospital, the diagnosis is made by the doctors. So they want investigations that will support or confirm the diagnosis for example, the CT scan. So our patients don't have funds to fund themselves in performing the CT scan because the CT scan is expensive. So if they fail to do the CT scan on time, it will delay the treatment and the surgery part of the treatment. The trained and experienced personnel are leaving the hospitals to greener pastures which leaves us in a situation whereby we won't be able to reach out other areas or various districts or locations. So this in turn will affect the amount of information reaching out to various areas because there is no personnel. So information about retinoblastoma will be limited in societies. My name is Priscilla Chitubutubu. I'm the sister in charge of the Kuruka Gurui Eye Hospital. I'm in charge of, of the eye theatres whereby in theatre we take care of patients with retinoblastoma where we do procedures like examination under anesthesia and also for those who need yeah, a nucleation they come to theater and also I'm a trainer of trainers for retinoblastoma whereby we go outside uh, to areas like Mutare, Blawayo training other health care workers on how to detect uh, retinoblastoma early so that we can treat it so that those patients can benefit from the early treatment. I'm also a trainer of trainers for retinoblastomas. The aim is to raise awareness in areas that fall under the jurisdiction of Sekul Kaguri and UBH hospitals, whereby we are giving them information on how to detect uh, retinoblastoma at an early stage so that they can benefit from the treatments that are offered when retinoblastoma is identified at early stages. In the training, we train the healthcare workers, uh, especially the eye healthcare workers. They can also teach other healthcare workers like the midwives so that they can detect retinoblastoma very early, especially when the babies go for baby clinics where they are done the weighing, the monthly weighing, and they are assessed for any other issues that can come in childhood stages. Our theater department is very important because as you know, children are not uh, cooperative when they are examined. So whenever a child comes to our department and is suspected to have retinoblastoma, they are taken to theater where, where they are done a procedure called examination and anesthesia. They are put to sleep and they are examined to check the extent the retinoblastoma is affected the eye. So we are saying we need to identify retinoblastoma at an early age stage so that we can save the life of the baby and also we can save the globe. And lastly, we can also save vision if, if the stage of the retinoblastoma is at very early stages.
However, in as much as you want to do this, we are facing challenges because of strong religious beliefs. They tend to seek treatment from their mothers, from their prophets, before they report for the hospital. Or at times the diagnosis is made, and then they they leave the hospital and go and look or opinions elsewhere, especially to their prophets and learners as well, traditional healers. So these are some of the challenges which makes them report late to hospital with tumors that are now fanating. So fanating tumors, the only option is to do chemo reduction and maybe a nucleate. They won't benefit from intravitreal chemotherapy. My name is Mrs. Uh, Soyan I'm the National Programs Manager for Zimbabwe Council for the Blind. In Zimbabwe Council for the Blind, we are very grateful for the support that we've uh, received uh, from our donors, namely uh, Christian Blind Mission, the Lions Club International Foundation, the Lions uh, Dutchland, the RTL, that is the Warrior Tolstein uh, Kingdom for the, for the grant which is supporting the project uh, strengthening retinal blastoma services at the major uh, uh, pediatric eye hospitals. So the pediatric eye hospitals uh, that have been supported with this program are Sekuru Kapuri uh, Eye Hospital <coughs> that is in uh, Harare, our capital city here in Zimbabwe, and also Richard Morris in Mulawai, the second uh, largest uh, city in Zimbabwe. And uh, also, we are very grateful to our uh, grateful for the support that we are getting from the Ministry of Health and Child Care. So we are working uh, in conjunction with the Ministry of Health and uh, and uh, Child Care, that is our parent ministry. Without them, this uh, program was not going to be possible. This project was uh, was 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 covering the following. The caregivers or the parents and the children were being provided with custody services and uh, before the children underwent any surgeries, um, the project also managed to pay for the tests that were needed, whether they were bloods or even CT scans, those were also covered by the, by the project. And uh, some consumables and uh, some consumables that were also required by the pediatric ophthalmologists and also the other surgeons and the ophthalmologists, they were also being provided for by the project. We are very grateful for that. And um, the bus fares, the accommodation for the or for the caregivers when they were bringing the children even for consultations or even for surgeries and also for chemotherapy, they were also covered by the project. And uh, furthermore, uh, chemotherapy as well, when the chemotherapy drugs were not being, um, if they were not there at the oncology hospital, then it meant that the project would also facilitate the provision of those. In terms of uh, awareness raising, the project also managed to uh, produce some t-shirts, like the one that I'm putting on, and then also some uh, posters and uh, some flyers, some tests to also distribute, so that uh, this was also a way of uh, raising awareness out there about uh, retinoblastoma. To date, since the commencement of the program in uh, 2020 June, we have uh, managed to assist 27 uh, children and uh, also we have some survivors of, of, of retinal blastoma from the previous years, there are about uh, like 12 of them. We are also doing follow-ups on their well-being uh, monthly and uh, currently we have uh, 13 children who are undergoing uh, chemotherapy. The challenges that we faced uh, during the, the, the course of this project, uh, the, uh, firstly the myths and misconceptions that are there on retinal blastoma, because when the parents are, are coming with the, the child and they're told that this is an eye cancer that is affecting children that are under the age of five, there will be one minute disbelief and at times they also end up consulting um, the traditional healers and other face, uh, maybe the, the, the other religious leaders who also tell them um, some other causes. So this leads to a, a conflict of, of beliefs resulting in some uh, caregivers uh, 
defaulting uh, treatment, they do not bring in their children for, for treatment. So we have had a number of cases that we have had to follow up and unfortunately there are some uh, children that have been uh, lost to follow up because of these uh, myths and misconceptions uh, towards uh, retinoblastoma. Uh, I would also say another challenge that we have is lack of awareness because when we are also taking history or also interviewing the parents, they will tell you that maybe they started at the health center and then they were really given the ordinary eye ointment, um, yet this was a retinoplastoma. So we are saying that um, even the nurses themselves and even the community they also need uh, awareness about retinoblastoma to say what is retinoblastoma so that it can be recognized at an early stage. Because if, if a parent would have sought uh, treatment early, but you find out that um, they will end up not getting that treatment, uh, if they receive the wrong treatment until it is too late when they're reporting to the tertiary institution. So for this uh, challenge, we have managed to produce some posters which also have some, which have the numbers for uh, Richard Morris and a number also for, for Sepulchre Gubi Eye Unit. So that if ever a nurse uh, suspects it's retinoblastoma, they quickly get a hold of the OPNs or the nurses that are in this major eye unit. Another challenge that we're experiencing uh, in our project is that uh, we've lost a number of skilled uh, uh, OPNs that is ophthalmic nurses, and also some of our school doctors also have, uh, are living for junior pastures. So this is leaving our eye units also uh, exposed with the unskilled or inexperienced uh, or staff, staff so to deal with the, the retinoblastoma. And then also the other, uh, the other challenge that we're having is uh, the death uh, when, when I'm looking at la last month alone, we lost four children to retinoblastoma. And this is very worrisome and also it's uh, draining and stressful to, to the, the staff and also to the caregivers as well. So we are still trying to see what uh, really is the cause. Was it a uh, late presentation while working hand in hand with the doctors and also with the nurses to really find out what really could have been the problem so that we do not have high death, high death rates as well. And also the trauma that also comes with losing these children when you have seen them and seen their progress. It's, it's very, it, 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 it's very hard taking as well. So as the programmers, our recommendations will be as follows. The, the first one is uh, training. We did not have any aspect of training in the project. Uh, if we had an aspect of training, it meant that we would be going out there to train the registered the general nurses and also the OPNs uh, countrywide so that they are aware, when, uh, uh, aware on what to do when a child uh, comes in um, presenting with the, with the retinoblastoma signs and symptoms. And also our other um, uh, uh, recommendation will be uh, awareness, during post-natural uh, care and also during antenatal care, the nurses at the ANC ward and also the PNC is the post-natal care, they are also supposed to be aware of this retinoblastoma so that when a mother is coming in with the, the baby, maybe at, uh, at, 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 during six weeks, they are able to, to also check whether the, the child is retinoblastoma or not. And also, um, we still commend the counseling uh, the, 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 the counseling services that the, the project had, those ones should also continue because we've seen that they really play a pivotal role when parents and um, caregivers are also refusing treatment. This has uh, really played a pivotal role to say we call in our, the, the counselors and when they are counseled, they really see to it that the, benefit, the benefits of undergoing the, the project. Then um, finally, our other uh, recommendation will be let's be proactive in doing uh, active care stage of the, the, the retinoblastoma children. We are still waiting for the results from our research that we're doing, which we want to calculate the prevalence of, of retinoblastoma in our communities. This is a research that is also funded by this project, and uh, thank you so much uh, to, the, to the donors for that. So when we get the prevalence of uh, how much really uh, the, 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 uh, is the problem of the retinoblastoma in Zimbabwe, then we are able to, to
to go out there in the community to really do the active case searching of this of children with retinal blastoma. That will also uh, help. Because for now, what the project is doing is we are waiting for a caregiver or a mother at home to recognize that there is something wrong with their child's eye. So all of those 27 uh, children that we're seeing, it's because a caregiver or it's a parent that has come in with their child because they realized that there was something wrong with the child's eye. What we want to do now is, uh, the focus is we are supposed to do an active case search, train village health workers, train community uh, health workers so that they can go out there and do uh, awareness to the mothers and they also uh, during uh, maybe vaccinations and also immunizations for the under fives, they are also checking for this uh, for this region of the storm. Another strategy that has worked in our previous uh, projects is also media involvement. If we have funding, that we will take the project to the radio stations and also to the uh, TV stations like our previous uh, uh, project. That will also uh, well, go a long way in uh, creating awareness to the population of Zimbabwe about retinal blastoma. In conclusion, would very much like to thank our partners for their unwavering support. That is uh, Fish and Blind Mission, the Lions Club Foundation International, the Lions uh, Dashland, uh, the RTL, the Weya uh, Health and Kingdom, and also would like to thank our parent ministry, the Ministry of uh, Health and Child Care, and we also would like to thank the Zimbabwe Council for the Blind, and Without uh, omission, we'd also like to thank the staff members that have, have been working tirelessly um, in this project. And we'd also like to thank the caregivers and also the children themselves in making this documentary and also this project a success. Thank you.